right, so in this tutorial, we're going to show you how to create a shadow. And uh, what you want to do is you want to have your image and cut that image out of its background and use that original image to create the shadow for it. So I've already gone and taken a image and cut it out. I've used the letter R for Rocky. I like that one, so we'll go ahead and use that. And let me turn my original image layer off so we can see what's been cut out here. So I've got just the R ready to go. Now what I can do is I can come over here and take the R layer and I want to duplicate this. So I want to go ahead and click and hold, drag that onto my create new layer here on my layers window. And now I've got a duplicate of that. So what we'll do next is we'll come up to image, adjustments, and then levels. And now what we'll do is we'll take the white all the way to the black on our levels here. So we're going to click and drag all the way to the left and make this just a pure solid black. Now we've got this layer on top of our other original image. So what we'll do is we'll drag that and push it back underneath the original. Now what we want to do is we want to scale this out to create our shadow on the background. So what we'll do is we'll come up to the marquee tool select our tool or hit M on the keyboard and we're gonna right click and do a free transform and then we want to right click once again and then we want to come and do a perspective so we're gonna scale on a perspective constraint we're gonna push from the top over to the left here just to slide it over into the background here on the left side so now we've got that and we want to confirm that perspective scale before we do anything else and then we, once we've accepted that let's right click on it again and do a free transform and at this point you can do a free scale or you can right click again and go to scale or do the same thing so let's just go ahead and scale down from the top again however far down you wish to go with the perspective on the shadow so that looks pretty good and we'll go ahead and accept that you can do a check mark here or you can hit enter on the numeric keypad so let's do an enter and now there's basically a shadow here so really it's a matter of either leaving it or making a little more tweaks to it you can make it look maybe a little more realistic and add some fuzziness to the edges so it's not such a hard edge uh, whatever shadow you're trying to get going here so one way we can do that is uh, we can take this layer and before we do anything we can just duplicate it so we have an original master to go back to if we need to and just turn that first one off and now we can work with the duplicate that's popped up above it so now one thing I'd like to try is uh, always uh, maybe fix the edges from being so solid so we can come up to filter and do a blur and Gaussian blur and just sort of play with a low setting on that nothing too extreme so it doesn't totally blow up um, so maybe somewhere fairly low on the scale here so that looks pretty good somewhere around that so we can hit OK and then maybe we can also drop the opacity so it looks like on this layer here uh, if we drop it down maybe somewhere around 70 50 I think that somewhere around 50 60 should be good that looks all right so I mean if you want to stop there or we can continue we can come up to our eraser tool and uh, maybe set our opacity on our eraser brush to something around 30 30 or 20 Let's try 25 and uh, just right click make sure we've got a soft tip brush on our eraser to get the effect we're going for click away and then I can sort of manually just eyeball it click and hold let go and then click and hold again and then click and hold one more time just sort of make a few passes over this to show it has a fall off in the background uh, another way we can get that is uh, we can try another method if we turn that off come back to our original layer our master layer uh, we can make another duplicate of it to work with turn that back off again so now on this copy we can try something else we can do a mask so we can do a uh, add new mask on our layers window and you can see it accepts so now we can tell we're working in a mask layer and I'll come over here and just click and hold or select my gradient tool here I want to make sure your colors are black and white and I can start somewhere around here so now that this is a mask what we do with the gradient will create a fall off based on that gradient so maybe somewhere up top here I can start from the top and then drag down 
and that actually creates a bit of a fall off already. Um, and that looks pretty good. So if I wanted to blur this a bit, I would first need to convert this layer to a rastered layer. So we want to rasterize it. So we want to right click, convert to smart object, and then right click one more time and do a rasterize the layer. So now when we make the change on the filter, it'll come through uh, and it'll actually affect that layer. So let's come back up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And you can see that it has made the changes based on that rasterization. And that looks pretty good on itself. So that's the gradient layer that we add the mask to. We can turn that off. And that's the one we did manually. Again, so you get a pretty similar effect, whichever is your preference. We can drop the opacity on the gradient layer. And we're getting pretty much two different methods on creating a shadow and adding a little bit more uh, tweaking to it. So. Uh, again, this is uh, Rocky with Rocky Art. Uh, please look forward to the next uh, couple videos we'll have here, some more basic steps, basic tips, and we'll get into, we'll have some more advanced videos along the way as well. So thanks for checking in. We'll see you next time.